Today we're going to talk about the procedure your nurse wishes she didn't have to watch you do. That's toenail removals. There are multiple indications for toenail removal. We got onychocryptosis or ingrown toenails, chronic recurrent perinichia. These two often go together. Typically chronic ingrown toenails causes recurrent infections. Onychomycosis, which is a fungal infection, or onychogryposis, which is a deformed nail. So when should we not do the procedure? If they're allergic to the local anesthesia, they have a bleeding disorder, then also if someone has severe peripheral vascular disease, you might want to reconsider. Some people say that there's a relative contraindication in patients with diabetes, but I think it's a lot better to assess their peripheral vascular status versus if they have diabetes or not. Particularly, recurrent perinichia can cause some serious complications in a patient with diabetes. For the procedure itself, first we want to do our digital block. So we prep the toe and then we do the block. Digital blocks is a separate talk. This doctor first injected along the medial aspect of the toe, then the dorsal, and then the lateral. Let's put this all together to see what it looks like. Wrap the toe tight with Coban to exsanguinate the toe. Apply the tourniquet. I find it easiest to use a hemostat to elevate the nail. Make sure you slide it all the way down to the nail bed, then clamp and lift out the wing. Cut parallel to the nail. Remember, you only need to take a small portion, so stay pretty close to the edge. Once it's cut, use the hemostat to roll the nail out. If you're not sure, you can probe for fragments to make sure there's no nail shards left. If you need, you can also do the other side. Use a hemostat to elevate the nail. Make sure you slide it all the way down to the nail bed, then clamp and lift out the wing. Cut parallel to the nail. Remember, you only need to take a small portion, so stay pretty close to the edge. You can probe for fragments to make sure there's no nail shards left. If we want permanent nail removal, use phenol. We need to apply phenol for three separate applications for 30 seconds each. We only need the phenol to kill the nail matrix. So if this person used smaller swabs, it could help keep the phenol from contacting other tissues. Phenol is super caustic, so you don't want to breathe this stuff. Isopropyl alcohol neutralizes phenol, so you can apply it with a clean swab. I've also seen people use several isopropyl alcohol wipes to neutralize the phenol. And there we go. The nail looks good, and thanks to the exsanguination, we have minimal bleeding. For your equipment, you need to prep it and do the nerve block first. So you need a 3 ml to 5 ml syringe. You want it with lidocaine without epinephrine. You'll need a needle that's at least an inch long, if not longer, preferably a 27 gauge, but a 25 gauge would work also. You need your betadine gauze swabs, sterile gloves, and then a tourniquet. The tourniquet could be anything from a formal tourniquet to a rubber band. I've seen fingers of gloves used or Penrose strains. For the procedure itself, you'll need a nail elevator, a nail cutter or heavy duty scissors, and then at least two hemostats. If you're performing a permanent removal, you'll want a curette, several Q-tips, the phenol, and then alcohol to neutralize the phenol. And finally, for cleanup, you'll want some antibiotic ointment, gauze pads, and tape.